so yes guys so we were talking about in days 37 let's look at certain questions on that question number one abc is an automobile component manufacturer The automobile manufacturer has a specified delivery schedule and non adherence to which will entail a penalty. On 31st March, that on the reporting date, on 31st March, which is the reporting date, the manufacturer had a delivery schedule for June 2012. However, the manufacturer is aware that he will not be able to meet the delivery schedule in June 2012. Determine whether the entity has a present obligation on 31st March. Guys, when is the delivery falling due in the month of June? Even though I knew that I cannot meet the delivery schedule, it is a future event. So therefore, the obligation of penalty is a possible obligation. It is not a present obligation. Therefore, in this case, I will not recognize any provision as per India's 37. In this case, there is no present obligation arising from past event as the goods are scheduled to be delivered in June 2012. And there is no delay as on 31st March. Hence, there is no present obligation to pay. Therefore, no present obligation to recognize a provision. Look at question number two. ABC has an obligation to restore the seabed for the damage it caused in the past. It had to pay 10 lakh cash on 31st March 2013 relating to this liability. ABC management considers 5% as the appropriate discount rate and the time value of cons uh, is considered to be material. Calculate the amount to be provided on 31st March for the cost of restoring the seabed. Guys, 5% discounting at the end of 2011 you are, you are reporting and the expenditure is incurred to be met on 31st of March 2013. So what should be the appropriate amount at which you have to recognize? You will have to recognize at 5% discounting for 2 years. Calculate 5% discounting for 2 years. 1 divided by 1.05. First year discount factor is 0.952. Second year discount factor is 0.907. So 0.907 into 10 lakhs is 9 lakhs 7000. That should be the amount to be recognized as liability. Present value of uh, estimated dismantling cost or site restoration cost is 9 lakhs 7000. That should be recognized. Every year I will have to recognize an interest cost. In next year that is 2011-12 I will recognize 5% which is 45,351 as interest cost that next year again 5%. So this way I will make sure that by the end of 2013 I will get back the 10 lakhs. Every year the interest cost should be capitalized or sorry, sorry should be charged to PNL as finance cost. Marico has an obligation to restore environmental damage in the area surrounding the factory. The expert advice in indicates that the restoration will be carried out in two distinct phases. The first phase requiring an expenditure of 2 million to remove the contaminated soil from the area and the second one commencing three years later at the end of the first phase to replant the area with suitable trees and vegetation. The estimated cost of replantation is 3.5 million. Marico uses a cost of capital of 10% and the expenditure when incurred will attract a tax relief at the rate of 30%. Marico has not recognized any provision for these on the date of 31st March 2012. Okay. The first phase of cleanup will commence few months in time and will be completed on 31st March 2013. Guys, you are standing on 31st March 2012. First phase will complete on 31st March 2013. And the second phase will be three years after the first phase. That is 31st March 2016. Okay. Calculate the provision. Calculate 20 lakhs in the first phase after one year. So present value factor of 10% for one year. But 2016, that is five years of, sorry, four years of discounting at 10% is 0.683. So calculating based on the provisions, uh, based on discount factors of 10%. First year is present value factor of 10,1. Second year, se uh, sorry, second phase is present value factor of 10, 4. Therefore, ultimately, the, the present value as 42,8500, which should be recognized as a liability on 31st March 2012 itself. Let's look at questions related to income tax. 
The director of H Limited wishes to recognize a material deferred tax asset in relation to 250 crores of unused trading losses which were accumulated as on 31st March 2011. H has budgeted profit of 80 crores at the end of 31st March 2012. The director had forecasted that the profits will go, grow at 20% thereafter. However, the improvement in trading profits may occur after the next couple of years to come at the position of break even. The market is currently, currently depressed and the sale order at the lowest level. H operates in a tax jurisdiction which allows the trading losses can be carried forward to a maximum of 2 years. Analyze whether a deferred tax asset can be recognized or not. Guys, you remember law of prudence. Every time you recognize a deferred tax asset, you have to check for prudence. What is the concept of prudence? Sufficient taxable profits will arise in the future against which the loss can be realized or the, de the deductible temporary differences can be realized. Here, 250 crores of loss, I should understand whether I will get sufficient taxable pro future profits or no. Very clearly he is saying the director have forecasted that the profits will grow by 20% each year thereafter. However, the improvement in trading profits may occur after the next couple of years to come at the, uh, to come at the point, position of break even. The market is currently depressed. Sale orders are at the lowest level in the first quarter of 2012. Therefore, the same period in the any, any previous of 5 years. So therefore, you need to understand that the loss will continue for the next 2 years. And beyond two years, you cannot carry forward the loss. Therefore, you cannot recognize a deferred tax asset since it is not it is not satisfying your law of prudence. Clear? In relation to the unused tax losses, the carrying value of zero since the losses have not yet been recognized in books. H, a potential deferred tax asset does arise, but determination is more problematic. The tax base of an asset will be deductible against taxable economic benefits that recover from the carrying value of the asset. When recovering the carrying value of the asset will have no tax consequences, the tax base is zero or sorry, which will be equal to carrying value. So very clearly you cannot have any, therefore the contention of the director to recognize deferred tax is not correct. S limited leased a machine for five years period. The present value of lease liability is 120 crores at a discount of 8%. It is recognized as a lease and is recognized as a lease liability and a corresponding ROU asset on the same date that is on 1st April 2011. ROU asset is depreciated over 5 years on a straight line basis and the annual lease rental is 30 crores payable starting from 31st of March 2012. Tax law permits tax deduction on the payment of rent. Guys that is how even income tax act also applies. India's 116 talks about recognition of ROU asset, lease liability and all. But ultimately when you look at your tax purposes, it is only based on the lease rentals paid. Assuming that the tax rate is 30%, explain the deferred tax consequences at the end of 31st March 2012. Guys, by the end of 31st March 2012, what is the carrying value of the ROU asset? 120 crores depreciated over 5 years. That means the depreciation is equal to 24 every year. Correct? 24 reduced from 120, carrying value of ROU asset is 96. What about the lease liability carrying value? Lease liability carrying value is 120 crores plus interest at the rate of 8%. Calculate 120 into 8% which is 9.6 minus 30 repayment. The ROU the lease liability will be 99.6 crores. This is the carrying value. What is the tax base? Absolute round zero. Absolute round zero. So your lease liability and ROU asset net difference is 3.6. 3.6 of lease liability excess, which is the carrying value. Tax base is zero. Therefore, the temporary difference is 3.6. At the rate of 30%, if you calculate, ultimately you will get a deferred tax of 1.08. Now question will be, is this a deferred tax asset or is this a deferred tax liability? You need to understand that your carrying value is greater than your tax base. And this is in the case of a liability. Whenever you have a liability which has a carrying value greater than the tax base, then it should result. It should result in a deferred tax asset. So therefore, the temporary deductible temporary differences 
3.6 will result in a deferred tax asset of 1.08. Let's look at employee benefits then. Mr. Rajan is working for Infotech Limited. Considering the particular following particulars, the annual salary of Mr. Rajan is 30 lakhs. Total working days is 300. Leaves allowed according to the company's policy is 10, but the leaves utilized by Rajan is only 8. Though there are two unutilized leaves. The unutilized leaves are settled by way of payment and accordingly carried forward for such leaves to the subsequent period is not allowed. So they are encashable, you cannot carry forward. So these are accumulating compensated absences which are vesting in nature, encashable in nature. Compute the total taxable, uh, uh, sorry, employee benefit for the year 2010-11. Guys, 300 days, his salary is how much? 30 lakhs. Per day, how much salary is he drawing? Per day, salary is 30,000. How many days can he take a encashment benefit for? Two days. Two days into 30,000. That is total amount of 60,000. So 60,000 rupees should be the encashment provision for accumulating short term compensated absences which are vesting in nature should be created. So already salary cost is 30 lakhs plus additional 60,000 of provision. So total staff cost or employee benefit expense is 30 lakh 60,000. 20,000. How 20,000? 10,000 only per day. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. 10,000 per day. 30 lakhs divided by 300 is 10,000 per day. Two days is 20,000. Provision is 20,000. So total cost is 30 lakh 20,000. Uh, I'm sorry guys, the numbers are not visible. I think you will be able to see it. Let's check. One second guys. Now I am able to see it guys. I hope you can see it as well. Yeah. Mr. Niranjan was working for Infotech Limited and had the following salary. Annual salary is 30 lakhs for last year as well as for the current year. Number of working days is 300 and 300. Leave allowed is 10 days and 10 days. Leave taken last year 7 days. So therefore they could carry forward 3 days of leave. Next year he utilized the entire 13 days of leave. So, based on the past experiences, the uh, Infotech Limited assumes that Mr. Niranjal will avail the unutilized leave of three days in the next year itself. Infotech Limited contends to record 30 lakhs as employee benefit expense. Answer is wrong because in the current year, you will also have to recognize a provision for the carried forward leave. How much is per day leave? Per day cost of staff cost is 10,000. 10,000 into 3 days. How much is the provision to be created? Provision to be created is 30,000 rupees. So therefore in the current year when I recognize 30,000 rupees of provision. So I will recognize 30 lakhs of salary cost plus 30,000 rupees of provision also. Next year when I recognize I will only recognize 2 lakh 90,000. 29 lakh 70,000. How much should be recognized? 10,000 per day. Look at the entries which he recognized. Yeah, first year entry is 30 lakh 30,000 because he is creating a provision. In the next year, I will reduce it by 30,000 because of the provision which has already been created. So next year, employee benefit expense is 29 lakh 70. Provision for leave encashment is 30,000. Provision for compensated leaves, guys, actually compensated absences to bank 30 lakhs. So these are the entries that you have to record. Look at the next one. Pratap Limited belongs to a shipbuilding industry. Company reviewed its actuarial valuation for the first time for its pension scheme, which revealed a surplus of 60 lakhs. It wants to spread the surplus over two years by amount of redu by reducing 20 lakhs by reducing its amount of contribution to 20 lakhs instead of 50 lakhs. So he is recognizing actuarial gain of 60 lakhs by reducing his contribution each year by 30 lakhs each, which is not possible. 
because actuarial gain or losses should be recognized in PNL immediately sorry it should be recognized in OCI in the year in which they occur you cannot reduce the contribution each year and that will bring us to the end of discussion read the answer of question number 8 as per India's 19 any actual gain or loss should be recognized in the measurement as a measurement of net defined obligation in the OCI so in the given case the amount of surplus on pension scheme of 60 is an actual gain should be recognized as remeasurement in uh, in the other comprehensive income and not adjusted to the annual amount of contribution in future periods the change relating to actuarial valuation for the pension scheme requires a disclosure as per India's 8 and disclosures as per India's 19 should also be made in the financial statements. So that will bring us to the end of discussion relating to questions on India's 12, India's 19 and India's 37.